ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम अज्ञानतिमीरांद से ज्ञानाजुनशलाकया चक्षुन्मीत मेना तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्यमनोभीष्ट स्थापित मीन भूतले स्वयं रूपकदा ददा स्वदाक वंदेह श्रीगुर श्रीयुतपदकमल श्रीगुर वैष्णवांश श्री रूपम सागरजात सह गण रघुनाथ तम सजीव साइत सवदूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधाकृष्ण पाद सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्ता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगत्पते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदवनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचाकलपतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण प्रेष्टा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदातस्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधरा श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी टू योर वंडरफुल प्रोग्राम इन योर एसोसिएशन सो यू लाइक टू हैव एनी क्वेश्चंस आस्क एनी क्वेश्चंस यू हैव माता जी सन प्रभु Um, yeah i think uh, i have one question um, prabhu uh, might be a minute one but still i have no clarity uh, the difference between uh, bhagavad gita and bhagavatam prabhu what is that bhagavad gita is spoken by lord krishna and bhagavatam is spoken about lord krishna bhagavad gita is the basic it got about 700 verses covering five subject matters mm-hmm. one about god who is god two who are we the spirit soul three what is karma four what is material nature and five time and the bhagavatam has got 18000 verses it covers 10 subject matters you know from creation to sub creation to past times of krishna explaining who is krishna and the what is past time like this there are 10 subject matters it actually reveals uh, the supreme personality of god itself and bhagavatam is the last book written by vedavyas after that he is no more book written by him so the bhagavatam is very important because it reveals krishna as the supreme personality of god it you know okay understand yeah it is called the amalam puranam vaishnavam priyam is the topmost book anyone who reads the bhagavatam will quickly develop love for krishna you know mm-hmm. uh, for a person like me prabhu who is still in search i mean like to understand more about krishna and then who is struggling to become a devotee um which is the best should, book i think you should read the book called signs of self realization maybe they okay. can recommend the book to you huh 
Yeah, sure, Prabhu. That is the first book that we recommend everybody to read before even reading the Bhagavad Gita, you know. Yeah, Prabhu. Mm -hmm. I have signs of... Do you have the book? Uh, yeah, The Science of Self-Realization by Prabhupada. Yes, that is the book. Yeah, I have that book. Have you read sure. that? No, Prabhu, I, I got it. I did not. Actually, I've got a couple of books. Uh, Chant and Be Happy. Mm, yeah, you can and... read that also. Yeah, I'm reading Bhakti Yoga for now first to start with. I mean, it has a beautiful cover. So I thought I was attracted towards the cover and started reading about. Again, this is by um, Prabhupada Ji only. So. Mm. Of course, any of Prabhupada books is good. But, you know, for beginners, we definitely recommend the Science of self realization Sure, if you Prabhu. find it is a bit too big, then it can read any of his small books, you know. No harm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, at least you start reading, you know, that gives you a lot of philosophical, what you say, understanding. Because sure. hearing is very important in making spiritual mm -hmm. advancement. Yeah, Prabhu. You want to read this, Srimad Bhagavatam? Yeah. Hare Krishna. Srimad mm. Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is the spotless Purana. It is most dear to the Vaishnavas because it describes the pure and supreme knowledge of the Paramahamsas. The Bhagavatam reveals the means for becoming free from all material work together with the process of transcendental knowledge, renunciation and devotion. Anyone who seriously tries to understand Srimad Bhagavatam, who properly hears and chants it with the devotion becomes completely liberated. Mm. Yep. Yeah. So this Bhagavadam is so powerful, you know. Yeah, Prabhu. I'm actually getting attracted again back, Prabhu. I mean, like I'm I'm trying to come towards Krishna and somewhere I mean like either probably my lifestyle or where I'm doing and all, it still pulls me back to this materialistic world and then, yeah, I'm not able to advance in this spiritual life. Well, you need association, you know. That's the main problem. Because to do it all alone is difficult. So if you yeah. have a devotee with you, then it's very easy, you know. Yeah, yeah, probably. Hmm? Yeah, so, I completely yeah. agree. <laughs> so if you can, uh, you know, I don't know, if you can go and spend some time with uh, Subhadra, it would be very nice if he can accommodate you for, you know, a few days. Then you can learn, you know, she has a morning program and all that. And she will be able to answer all your questions also, you know. Mm, yeah, probably. Uh, if you have a holiday, maybe on the weekend, you can try to go and associate with them. And that will Definitely. give you a lot of strength, you know, spiritually. Yeah, yeah. Mm. No problem. You talk to her and see how you can, she can accommodate you. Mm? Yeah. Sure. Yes. Shobha, any questions you have? So this is what the Bhagavadam covers, 10 subject, you know. Sukadev Goswami says in the Srimad Bhagavadam, there are 10 divisions of statement regarding the following, the creation of the universe, sub-creation, planetary system, protection by the Lord, the creative impetus, the change of Manu, the signs of God returning home, back to God at liberation and the Samum Bonum. So these are the 10 subject matters covered in the Bhagavadam. So, uh, Bhagavadam is, uh, you know, very powerful book. Yeah. One very um, nice sloka about this book. Take this verse out. Mm 
This verse is uh, spoken by Dasame Dasamam Lakshyam Asrita Shraya Vikraham Shri Krishna Kyam Param Dhamo Jagad Dhamam Namamitat. The tenth canto, the Srimad Bhagavatam reveals the tenth object, the Supreme Personality of Godhead with the shelter of all surrendered souls. He is known as Sri Krishna and is the ultimate source of all the universes. Let me offer my obeisances unto him. So this is the topmost uh, science. This is a quotation from Bhagavatartha Dipika, Sridhar Swami's commentary on the Srimad Bhagavatam 10.1.1. In the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a description of Ashriya Tattva, Sri Krishna, and there are two tattvas, Ashriya Tattva and Ashrita Tattva. Ashriya Tattva is objective and the Ashrita Tattva is a subjective. Since the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, Lord Sri Krishna, the shelter of all the all devotees, Sri Krishna is called Param Dhamma. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said, Param Brahma, Param Dhamma, Pavitram, Paramam Bhavan. Everything is lasting under the lotus feet of Krishna in the Srimad Bhagavatam 10, 14, 58, Samastrita Pada Pallava Plavam, Mahatpadam Punya Yeshu Murari. Under the lotus feet of Sri Krishna, the entire Mahatattva is existing. Everything, since everything is under Sri Krishna's protection, Sri Krishna is called Ashriya Tattva. Everything else is called Asrita Tattva. The material creation is called Asrita Tattva. Liberation from the material bondage and attainment of spiritual platform is also called Asrita Tattva. Krishna is the only Asriya Tattva. In the beginning of the creation, there are Mahavishnu, Garbhadaski Vishnu and Karn Chirodaski Vishnu. They are also Asriya Tattva. Krishna is the cause of all causes. Sarva Karna Karnam. To understand Krishna perfectly, one has to make an ethical study of the Ashriya Tattva and Ashrita Tattva. So this is about the Bhagavatam, you know. Any other questions? Uh, Prabhu, I have a question. In the material world, um, generally, uh, we we all came to Krishna consciousness and now uh, we have to tolerate, right? Like, for example, Prahlad Maharaj, uh, he was given more trouble, um, more problems by his own father. The more he tolerated, the more he kept getting more problems. So, when we become come to this Krishna consciousness, Initially, before coming, we never used to tolerate and we had like, say, pickle level was like five. And now after coming to Krishna consciousness, uh, because we are tolerating, will the difficult increase or will it be reduced, Prabhu? See, when you are in the mode of material nature, hmm, there's always going to be miseries. Why Krishna says, Dukhalya Mashashvatam. Mm -hmm. This material world is always problematic, and there are three kinds of kleshas, you know. That trouble created by one's mind, trouble created by another person's mind. Huh? Yes? Yes, Prabhu. And this way, there's always problem. And then the demigods are also creating trouble. Hmm? Yes? So there's always problems. Hmm? You can see here. So here you can see 
the can you read the living entity tries to achieve happiness and rid himself of the causes of distress but because the various bodies of the living entities are under the full control of material nature all his plans and different bodies one after another are ultimately baffled so see this is how it is affected is explained here these are the three kinds of uh, miseries inflicted on the condition so read on materialistic activities are always mixed with three kinds of miserable conditions adhyatmika adi daivika adi bautika therefore even if one achieves some success by performing such activities what is the benefit of this success one is still subjected to birth death old age and disease and the reactions of his fruit of activities yes Yes, sir. Report. According to the materialistic way of life, if a poor man, after laboring very, very hard, gets some material profit at the end of his life, he is considered a success, even though he again dies while suffering the threefold miseries: adhyatmika, adi daivika, and adi bautika. No one can escape the threefold miseries of materialistic life, namely miseries pertaining to the body and mind, miseries pertaining to the difficulties imposed by society, community. nation and other living entities and miseries inflicted upon us by natural disturbances from earthquakes famines droughts floods epidemics and so on if one works very hard if one works very hard suffering the threefold miseries and then is successful in getting some small benefit what is the value of this benefit besides that even if a karmi is successful in accumulating some material wealth he still cannot enjoy it for he must die in bereavement i have even seen a dying man begging a medical attendant to increase his life by 4 years so that he could complete his material plans of course the medical man was and successful in expanding the life of the man who therefore died in great bereavement everyone must die in this way and after once mental condition is taken into account by the laws of material nature he is given another chance to fulfill his desires in a different body material plans for material happiness have no value but under the spell of the illusory energy we consider them extremely valuable there are there were many politicians social reformers and philosophers who died very miserably without deriving any practical value from their material plans therefore a sa- sane and sensible man never desires to work hard under the conditions of threefold miseries only to die in disappointment so you see here how the material energy is inflating is uh, miseries on the condition soul yes yes bro so there's two kinds of people who don't get affected in this material world hmm? this is spoken by maitreya mm-hmm. uh shobha can you read hare krishna both the lowest of foods and he who is transcendent mm-hmm. to all intelligence enjoy happiness whereas persons between them suffer the material pangs So the, the two kinds, foods... two kinds of people, they are unaffected. The lowest of the fool and the transcendentalist, those who are beyond the three modes of mental nature. Can you read on? The lowest of fool do not understand material miseries. They pass their lives merrily and do not inquire into the miseries of life. Such persons are almost on the level of the animals who, although in the eyes of superiors, are always miserable in life. are unaware of material distresses 
A hog's life is degraded in its standard of happiness, which entails living in a filthy place, engaging in sex enjoyment at every oppor opportune moment, and laboring hard in a struggle for existence, but this is un unknown to the hog. Similarly, human beings who are un unaware of the miseries of material existence and are happy in sex life and hard labor are the lowest of fools. Yet, because they have no sense of miseries, they supposedly enjoy so-called happiness. The other class of men, those who are liberated and are situated in the transcendental position above intelligence, are really happy and are called Paramahamsas. But persons who are neither like hogs and dogs nor on the level of Paramahamsas feel the material pangs and for them inquiry about the supreme truth is necessary. The Vedanta Sutra states, Atoha Brahma Jignasa. Now one should inquire about Brahman. This inquiry is necessary for those who are between the Paramahamsas and the fools who have forgotten the question of self-realization in the midst of life in sense gratification. So you see two class of people, you know, one is the mentally retarded and the other one is the Paramahamsa. So those who are mad crazy, nothing affects them. You know. Then the other class, those who are above the three modes of mental nature, they also have no miseries, you know. Maya doesn't affect them because they are beyond. See here, this was. How can the fire of material suffering continue to burn the hearts of those who worship the Supreme Lord? The Lord's lotus feet have performed innumerable heroic deeds and the beautiful nails on his toes resemble valuable jewels. The effulgence emanating from those nails resembles cooling moonshine for it instantly relieves the suffering within the heart of the pure devotee such as the appearance of the moon's cooling light relieves the burning heat of the sun. So you see, the pure devotee, he doesn't suffer. Maya cannot affect him, you know. So although he does so many things in the material world, Maya cannot touch him, just like Krishna also is not affected by Maya. So the devotee who has taken shelter of Krishna also is not affected. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Guru Prabhu, can you read? Yeah. Hare Krishna. The influence of material nature cannot harm an enlightened soul even though he engages in material activities because he knows the truth of the Absolute and his mind is fixed on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Lord Kapila says that Mai Manasam a devotee whose mind is always fixed upon the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is called Atma Rama or Vidita Tattva. Atma Rama means one who rejoices in the self or one who enjoys in the spiritual atmosphere. Atma in the material sense means the body or the mind. But when referring to one whose mind is fixed on the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord, Atma Rama means one who is fixed in spiritual activities in relationship with the Supreme Soul. The Supreme Soul is the personality of Godhead and the, and the individual soul is the living entity. When they engage in reciprocation of service and benediction, the living entity is said to be in the Atma Rama position. This Atma Rama position can be attained by one who knows the truth as it is. The truth is that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the enjoyer and that the living entities are meant for his service and enjoyment. One who knows this truth and who tries to engage all resources in the service of the Lord escapes all material reactions and influences of the modes of material nature. An example may be cited in this, in this connection. 
Just as a materialist engages in constructing a big skyscraper, a devotee engages in constructing a big temple for Vishnu. Superficially, the, size, the skyscraper constructor and temple constructor are on the same level for both are collecting wood, stone, iron, and other building materials. But the person who constructs a skyscraper is a materialist, and the person who constructs a temple of Vishnu is Atma Rama. The materialist tries to satisfy himself in relation to his body by constructing a skyscraper, but the devotee tries to satisfy the super self, the supreme personality of Godhead, by constructing the temple. Although both are engaged in the association of material activities, the devotee is liberated and the materialist is conditioned. This is because the devotee who is constructing the temple has fixed his mind upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but the non-devotee who is constructing the skyscraper has his mind fixed in sense gratification. If while performing any activity, even in material existence, one's mind is fixed upon the lotus feet of the personality of Godhead, one will not be entangled or conditioned. The worker in devotional service in full Krishna consciousness is always independent of the influence of material nature. So you see here, um, the devotee, although engaged in material activities, <coughs> is not affected by Maya. You see the yes. point? That's why those who this this verse is so important because they say that guru can fall down, you know. Mm -hmm. But here, person who are fixed on Krishna, they cannot fall down because Maya cannot touch them. Mm. Okay? Maya cannot harm in an enlightened soul even though he engages in many material activities. But this ISKCON people, they are preaching that the Guru can fall down. Mm. Hmm? See how they are deviating from the philosophy? Understand? Uh, yes, Prabhu. Again, here in this verse, Can you read? This uh, is the divinity uh, of. Go ahead. This is the divinity of the personality of Godhead. He is not affected by the qualities of material nature, even though he is in contact with them. Similarly, the devotees who have taken shelter of the Lord do not become influenced by the material qualities. So then, so this is our program. You know, trying to. Go beyond the three modes of mental nature. Hmm? Yes, ma'am. This is what we want to do. Arihe nirguna shakshat purusha prakriti he para sa sarvadra gupadrashta tam bhajan nirguno bhavat. Lord Hari, however, has no connection with the material modes. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the all-seeing eternal witness who is transcendental to material nature. One who worships him becomes similarly free from the material modes. So this is the solution, how to come out of this problem. You understand? You try to find happiness, that's what you're all doing materially. We are all trying to find pleasure from the association of uh, Maya. This is our position. Uh, we are trying to find happiness through wealth, correct? Yes, bro. You want to read wealth that? Is a Wealth is a perpetual source of distress. It is most difficult to acquire and it is virtual death for the soul. Therefore, what satisfaction does one actually gain from his wealth? 
similarly how can one enjoy any genuine happiness from those things that are gained or maintained by one's hard earned money such as home children relatives and domestic animals since they are all temporary so wealth correct yes bro hmm that's what we are trying to do no so every day working hard hmm? thinking that this money will solve all our headaches correct yes bro for human society constantly thinking of how to earn money and apply it for sense gratification brings about the destruction of everyone's interests when one becomes devoid of knowledge and devotional service he enters into species of life like those of trees and stones do you want to end up like this no problem. america no you went to america for this no earning big bucks yes definitely no problem <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't believe this, you know. But are there trees standing out there? Who become trees? Hmm? <laughs> yes, American tree. Mm -hmm. A tree is a tree anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an American tree, you know. So I'm born in America. Correct. Yes, true. So we try to see how you know it's so dangerous. We're trying to seek happiness, and we're getting you know, because we get sidetracked. Hmm. That's why you know it says here yeah, that happiness from this is going to be a problem. Hmm. Yes. uh the next thing we try to seek help to have, you know we want to get happiness by family thing hmm? Hmm. this is another problem we are trying to find out happiness hmm yes yes bro kinjal mata ji can you read hari krishna shri prabhu pada Uh, no, Prabuddha. 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 Yeah, Sri. it's Nava Yog. Now one of the Nava Yogan version. Okay, Prabhu ji. Ah, uh, accepting the roles of the male and female in a human society, the conditioned souls unite in a sexual relationship. Thus, they constantly make the material endeavors to eliminate their unhappiness. and unlimitedly increase their pleasure but one should see that they in uh, inevitably achieve exactly the opposite result in other words their happiness inevitably vanishes and as they grow older their material discomfort increases yes yes bro yes Oh, see how we are trying to become happy is another verse also. So this is another verse. Kinjal Mata Ji. Yes. Ah, uh, as a husband and a wife, a man and a woman plan together to attain happiness and decrease. unhappiness working jointly in many ways but because the activities are full of desires they this active uh, activities are never a source of happiness and they never diminish distress on the contrary they are a cause of a great unhappiness yes mm -hmm. yes prabhu Um, so happiness trying to make money happiness in family life hmm? uh, maybe i go to heaven no correct <laughs> let me try the heavenly planet let's see what happens there Uh, 
सलूजा माता जी हरे कृष्णा भगवत प्रणाम जय श्री प्रभुपा वन कैन नॉट फाइंड परमानेंट हैप्पीनेस इवन ऑन द हेवनली प्लेनेट विच वन कैन अटेन इन द नेक्स्ट लाइफ बाय रिचुअलिस्टिक सेरेमनीज एंड सेक्रीफाइसिस इवन इन मेटीरियल हेवन द लिविंग एंटिटी इज डिस्टर्ब बाय राइवरली विद हिज इक्वल एंड एनवी ऑफ दो सुपीरियर टू हिम and since one's residence in heaven is finished with the exhaustion of pious fruitive activities the denizens of heaven are afflicted by fear anticipating the destruction of their heavenly life thus the resemble king who though enviously admired by ordinary citizens are constantly harassed by enemy kings and who therefore never attain actual happiness the so called heaven also you don't find happiness mm. yes yes and sir. you are frightened any moment you will fall down mm. correct yes please so how to get this happiness we understand the only way is to cross over the modes of material nature and get attached to krishna yes 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 coach so the process is explained here in this was this is how you can get this happiness therefore any person who seriously desires real happiness must seek a bona fide spiritual master and take shelter of him by initiation the qualification of bona fide guru is that he has realized the conclusion of scriptures by deliberation and is able to convince other of these conclusions such great personalities who have taken shelter of the supreme godhead leaving aside all material considerations should be understood to be a bona fide spiritual masters hari krishna yes yes in other words we have want to go to krishna because krishna is the source of all happiness yes mm -hmm. yes sir and to go to him we require a guru it's not possible otherwise you know yes sir hmm hmm because you cannot go to krishna directly that's not possible Krishna said to Arjuna, "If anyone who says he is my devotee, he actually is not my devotee. Anyone who says he is a devotee or my devotee, then he is my devotee." Hmm? Mm -hmm. So to know the signs of going to Krishna, you need the help of the pure devotee of Krishna. And Krishna himself says, "No." ट्रूथ बाय अप्रोचिंग ए स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर एनक्वायर फ्रॉम हिम सबमिसिवली एंड रेंडर सर्विस ओन टू हिम the self realized soul can impart knowledge on to you because he has seen the truth so you have to go to a guru to learn how to go to god krishna yes yes sir yes guru means not some any guy who is wearing any kind of dress or even like nowadays is gone you know they are producing so many rubber stamp gurus hmm? guru means he must be a self realized soul and he must be authorized by his guru not that he whimsically takes up this position and he must come from a authorized parampara hmm yes yes bro yes bro because there's a whole 
point on this guru thing. Everybody is trying to become a guru nowadays. Yes. Yes. Mataji, mm -hmm. wait. Yes, Mother. Your book should describe the characteristics of the bona fide guru and the bona fide disciple. Then, before accepting a spiritual master, one can be assured of the spiritual master's position. Similarly, the spiritual master can also be assured of the disciple's position. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, should be described as the worshipable object. And you should describe the Bija, Bija mantra for the worship of Krishna as well as that for Rama and for other expansion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hare Krishna. This purple is very important. A little bit long, but you can take turns and read it. Huh? Sure. Uh, Madhvi Mataji, can you read? Sure, Mataji. <coughs> In the Padma Purana, the characteristics of the Guru, the bona fide spiritual master, have been described. Mahabhagavata Shreshto. Okay, the words, huh? Yeah, you can sure. read the yeah, yeah. The Guru must be situated on the topmost platform of devotional service. There are three classes of devotees, and the Guru must be accepted from the topmost class. The first class devotee is the spiritual master for all kinds of people. It is said, Guru Narnam. The word Narnam means Narnam. Narnam means all of human beings. The Guru is not limited to a particular group. It is stated in the Upadesha Upadesh Upadesh Amrita Upadesh Amrita of Rupa Goswami, that a guru is a Goswami, a controller of the senses and the mind. Such a guru can accept disciples from all over the world. Prithvim Sasisyat, this is the test of the guru. In India, there are many so-called gurus and they are limited to a certain district or a province. They do not even travel about India Yet they declared themselves to be Jagat Guru, the Guru of the whole world. Such cheating Guru should not be accepted. Anyone can see how the bona fide spiritual master accepts disciples from all over the world. The Guru is qualified Brahmana, therefore, uh, the Guru is a qualified Brahmana, therefore, he knows Brahman and Parabrahman. Thus, he thus devotes his life for the service of Parabrahman. The bona fide spiritual master who accepts disciples from all over the world is also worshipped all over the world because of his qualities. Lokanam asav pujyo yata hari. The people of the world worship him just as they worship the supreme personality of Godhead. All these honors are offered to him because he strictly follows the Brahminical, Brahminical principles and teaches these principles to his disciples. Such a person is called an Acharya because he knows the principles of devotional service. He behaves in that way himself and he teaches his disciples to follow in his footsteps. Thus, he is an Acharya or Jagadguru. Even though a person is born in a Bra Brahminical family and is very expert in performing sacrifices, he cannot be accepted as a Guru if he is not a If he is not a strict Vaishnava, a guru is a Brahmana by qualification and he can turn others into Brahmanas according to the Sastric principles and Brahmanical qualifications. Brahmanism is not a question of heredity. In Srimad Bhagavatam 7.11.35, Sri Narada Muni tells Maharaja Yudhisthira what a Brahmana is. He states that if Brahminical qualifications are observed in Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, or even Shudras, one should accept them as Brahmanas. In this regard, Srila Sridhara Swami has committed some 
माताजी ओके द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट क्राइटेरियन फॉर डिसाइडिंग वेदर टू डील विथ समन एज ए ब्राह्मणा और एज ए मेंबर ऑफ अनदर वर्ना इज द प्रेजेंस और एब्सेंस ऑफ सेल्फ कंट्रोल एंड सिमिलर ब्राह्मणिकल क्वालिटीज we should not judge primarily according to the superficial characteristics like birth this is stated in the verse beginning yasasya if the qualities of one varna are seen in someone born in another he should be designated according to the varna of his qualities not that of his birth there is similar statement made by neelakanta a commentator on the mahabharata Sudropi samadhya upeto brahmana eva brahmano pi kamadhi upeta shudra eva although one may be born in shudra family he is endowed with the brahminical qualities beginning with sama control of the mind he is to be accepted as brahmana although one may be born in a brahmana family if he is endowed with the qualities of beginning with kama lust he is to be considered as shudra no one should present himself as a brahmana simply on the basis of being born in the brahmanical family one must be qualified by the brahmanical qualities mentioned in the shastras particularly the bhagavad gita 18.42 peacefulness self control austerity purity tolerance honesty knowledge wisdom and religiousness these are the natural qualities by which the brahmanas work unless one is qualified with all these attributes he cannot be accepted as brahmana it is not a question of simply taking birth in a brahmana family in this regard shrila bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakura remarks that narottama dasa thakura and samananda goswami although not born in brahmana families are accepted as bona fide spiritual masters because they were brahmanas by qualifications personalities like shri gang shri ganga narayana ramakrishna and many others who were actually born in brahmana families accepted narottama dasa thakura and shamananda goswami as their spiritual masters the mahabhagavata is one who decorates his body with tilaka and whose name indicates him to be servant of krishna by the word dasa dasa he is also initiated by a bona fide spiritual master and is expert in worshiping the deity chanting mantras correctly and performing sacrifices offering prayers to the lord and performing sankirtana he knows how to serve the supreme personality of the godhead and how to respect a vaishnava when one has attained the topmost position of mahabhagavata he is to be accepted as a guru and worshiped exactly like hari the personality of godhead only such a person is eligible to occupy the post of guru however if one is highly qualified but is not a vaishnava he cannot be accepted as guru one cannot be a brahmana unless one is vaishnava if one is vaishnava he is already a brahmana if a guru is completely qualified as vaishnava he must be accepted as a brahmana even if he is not born in the brahmana family the caste system method of distinguishing a brahmana by birth is not acceptable when applied to a bona fide spiritual master the spiritual master is qualified brahmana and acharya one who is not a qualified brahmana and is not expert in studying the vedic vedic literatures nana shastra vicharanaika nipunau cannot become a guru every vaishnava is a spiritual master and a spiritual master is automatically expert in brahmanical behavior he also understands the vedic shastras similarly a disciple's qualification must be observed by the spiritual master before he is accepted as disciple in our krishna consciousness movement the requirement is that one must be prepared to give up the four pillars of sinful life illicit sex meat eating intoxication and gambling in western countries especially we first observe whether a potential disciple is prepared to follow the regulative principles then he is given the name of vaishnava servant and initiated to chant the hare krishna maha mantra at least 16 rounds daily in this way the disciple renders devotional service under the guidance of the spiritual 
master or his representative for at least six months to a year. He is then recommended for a second initiation, during which a sacred thread is offered and the disciple is accepted as a bona fide Brahmana. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakura introduced the system of giving the sacred thread to a bona fide Vaishnava and we are following in his footsteps. The qualifications of a bona fide disciple are described in Srimad Bhagavatam as follows. The disciple must have the following qualifications. He must give up interest in the material bodily conception. He must give up material lust, anger, greed, illusion, madness, and envy. He should be interested only in understanding the science of God, and he should be ready to consider all points in this matter. He should no longer think, I am this body, or this thing belongs to me. One must love the spiritual master with unflinching faith, and one must be very steady and fixed. The bona fide disciple should be inquisitive to understand transcendental subject matter. He must not search out faults among good qualities and he should no longer be interested in material topics. His only interest should be Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As far as the mutual testing of spiritual master and disciple is concerned, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakura explains that a bona fide disciple must be very inquisitive to understand the transcendental subject matter, as stated in Srimad Bhagavatam. One who is inquisitive to understand the highest goal and benefit of life must approach a bona fide spiritual master and surrender unto him. A serious disciple must be alert when selecting a bona fide spiritual master. He must be sure that the spiritual master can deliver all the transcendental necessities. The spiritual master must observe how inquisitive the disciple is and how eager he is to understand the transcendental subject matter. The spiritual master should study the disciple's in inquisitiveness for no less than six months or a year. A spiritual master should not be very anxious to accept a disciple because of his material opulences. Sometimes, a big businessman or landlord may approach a spiritual master for an initiation. Those who are materially interested are called Vaishais, vaish, vaish, Karmis, which indicates that they are very fond of sense gratification. Such Vaishais, sometimes, vishais, some, uh, such vishais sometimes approach a famous guru and ask to become a disciple just as a matter of fashion. Sometimes, Vishayis pose as disciples of a reputed spiritual master just to cover their activities and advertise themselves as advanced in spiritual knowledge. In other words, they want to attain material success. A spiritual master must be very careful in this regard. Such business is going on all over the world. The spiritual master does not accept a materially opulent disciple just to advise the fact to advertise the fact that he has such a big disciple he knows that by associating with such vishayi disciples he may follow he may fall down one who accepts a vishayi disciple is not a bona fide spiritual master even if he is his position may be damaged due to association with the unscrupulous vishayi if a so-called spiritual master accepts a disciple for his personal benefit or for material gain, the relationship between the spiritual master and the disciple turns into a material affair and the spiritual master becomes like a Samartha Guru. Martha. There are many Samartha Martha. Martha Guru. Smartha Guru. There are many caste Goswamis who professionally create some disciples who do not care for them or their instructions. Such spiritual masters are satisfied simply to get some material benefits from their disciples. Such a relationship is condemned by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakura, who calls such a spiritual masters and disciples a society of cheaters and cheated. They are also called Baulas or Prakrita Sahajiyas. 
their aim is to make the connection between the spiritual master and the disciple into a very cheap thing they are not very serious in wanting to understand spiritual life shobha can you read guru prabhu can you read yeah <clears throat> the words savya bhagavan in this verse of the chaitanya charitam chaitanya charitamrita are important bhagavan indicates the supreme personality of godhead lord vishnu lord vishnu alone is worshipable there is no need to worship demigods this is confirmed in the bhagavad gita yeah i am not able to see the screen those That's whose okay. intelligence those whose right. intelligence has been stolen by material desires surrender onto demigods and follow the particular rules and regulations of worship according to their own natures it is also stated in the skanda purana a person who worships the uh, demigods and gives up lord vasudeva is like a man who gives up the protection of his mother Uh, can you scroll down? Uh, for the shelter of a witch, it is also stated by Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. Those who are devotees of other gods and who worship them with faith actually worship only me, O son of Kunti. But they do so, but they do so in a wrong way. demigods are also are also living entities and parts and parcels of krishna therefore in one sense one worships krishna when one worships the demigods but not in the proper way there is a proper method to water a tree one should water the root but if one waters the leaves and branches instead he is simply wasting his time if one worships the demigods to the exclusion of lord vishnu his rewards will only be material as confirmed by lord krishna in the bhagavad gita men of small intelligence worship the demigods and their fruits are limited and temporary those who worship the demigods go to the planets of the demigods but my devotees ultimately reach my supreme planet demigod worship demigod worship is meant for unintelligent men because the benefits derived from demigod worship are all material temporary and retractable it is also stated in the padma purana whoever thinks lord vishnu and the demigods are on the same level is to be immediately considered a rogue as far as spiritual understanding is concerned there are three modes of nature in the material world but when one is situated spiritually he is above the material modes even though he lives in this material world as lord krishna states in the bhagavad gita one who engages in full devotional service unfailing in all circumstances at once transcends the modes of material nature and thus comes to the level of brahman in material consciousness however even one who is situated in the mode of goodness is susceptible to pollution by the modes of passion and ignorance when the mode of goodness is mixed with the mode of passion one worships the sun god vivaswan when the mode of goodness is mixed with the mode of ignorance one worships ganapati or ganesha when the mode of passion is mixed with the mode of ignorance one worships durga or kali the external potency when one is simply in the mode of ignorance one becomes a devotee of lord shiva because lord shiva is the predominating deity of mode of ignorance within this material world however one is completely free from the influence of all the modes of material nature one becomes a pure vaishnava on the devotional platform as shrila rupa goswami states in the bhakti prasamrata sindhu one should render transcendental loving service to the supreme lord krishna favorably and without desire for material profit or gain through fruitive activities or 
philosophical speculation that is called pure devotional service the position of vishuddha sattva is the position of uncontaminated goodness on that platform one can then understand aradhyo bhagavan vrijesha tanayas tad dhama prindavanam the supreme personality of godhead the son of nanda maharaja is to be worshiped along with his transcendental abode prindavana the word sarva mantra vicharana is the present verse of shri chaitanya charitamrita means considering all different types of mantras there are different kinds of mantras for different kinds of devotees there is the mantra known as the dwad dwadashakshara mantra composed of 12 syllables and there is the mantra composed of 18 syllables similarly there are the narsimha mantra the rama mantra the gopala mantra and so on each and every mantra has its own spiritual significance the spiritual master has to select a mantra for his disciple according to the disciple's ability to chant different mantras but of course in kali yuga right now everybody start to chant the maha mantra hari krishna hmm? so yeah in this verse you see how the selection of the guru how the disciple should act they were very clearly listed hmm? so once you get connected especially now we are promoting as as what proper as ordered us to do that he will be the spiritual master and we will all become his disciple so the bona fideness of prabhupad is uncontested because he is definitely a pure devotee but uh, anyone who is advertising himself as a guru of the prabhupad Uh, that is not a uh, sanction because proper never ordered that so when without the order of proper you try to become a guru on your own right or some kind of word and that disqualifies you anyway yes yes sir yes, so that's what is con is trying to promote so here in is camp we uh, connect you to proper and your spiritual journey then begins you know for the taste of actual happiness hmm? yes so this is the process of how to get this happiness as we have already explained you want to read this uh paper while read it in the beginning there must be faith then one becomes interested in associating with pure devotees thereafter one is initiated by the spiritual master and executes the regulated principles under his orders thus one is freed from all unwanted habits and becomes firmly fixed in devotional service thereafter one develops taste and attachment this is the way of sadhana bhakti the execution of devotional service according to the regulated principles gradually emotions intensify and finally there is an awakening of love this is the gradual development of love of god head for the devotee interested in krishna consciousness so you see this is the process you know if you want to go then to krishna so we have to get the guru and then he gives a set of instruction to follow chanting 16 round following the four principles hmm? then by doing that we get to be free from all sinful activities beginning with lust you know lust lead to anger anger to greed greed to envy envy to bewilderment finally you become crazy mad when you are free from all that then you see you get to become fixed up you know nishta every day every day and that lead to ruchi taste you know and then attachment for krishna and that leads to bhava 
and bhava is preliminary stage of love of God, and finally you get love of God, which is called prema. Uh, yes. So the symptom of bhava is also described here. This is the symptom of bhava. You want to read this? Yeah. When the seed of ecstatic emotion for Krishna fructifies, the following nine symptoms manifest in one's behavior. Forgiveness, concern that time should not be wasted, detachment, absence of false prestige, hope, eagerness, a taste for chanting the holy name of the Lord, attachment to descriptions of the transcendental qualities of the Lord, and affection for those places where the Lord resides. That is a temple or holy place like Vrindavana. These are all called Anubhava, subordinate signs of ecstatic emotion. They are visible in a person in whose heart the seed of love of God has begun to fructify. Yes. So you see how stage by stage. Uh, first thing is that he doesn't want to, you know, he's forgiving, as it says here. Hmm? And then he does not want to waste time. Avyakta kalatvam. Uh, he's detached, absence of pride. Mana sunyeta. Then he is full of uh, eagerness, hope. And an important thing is that he has a taste for chanting the holy names of the Lord. You see? He is always chanting Krishna's name. Then his attachment to description of transform qualities of the Lord. Faction for those places where the Lord resides. There is a temple or holy place like Vrindavan. So have all symptoms of Anubhava. So stage by stage, you know, you get to become happy. And only with Krishna, with the help of a guru, you can become happy. There's no other way that you can actually become happy in the material world. That's why in the Bhagavad Gita, many times we have spoken on this, you know, verse. And this verse it says, Prasade Sarva Dukanam Hanir Ashva Pajayate Prasna Setu Shohya Asav Buddhi Parya Vatistate. For one thus satisfied in Krishna consciousness, you see that the, the threefold of material miseries does not exist. Exist no longer. In such a satisfied consciousness, one's intelligence soon well established. Yes? Yes. Just sir. now we described the threefold miseries, right? Adi yes, Atmik, Adi Bhautik and Adi Devi, right. correct? So if he's connected to Krishna through the Guru, hmm? and here if you are not connected, so one is not connected with Krishna, the Supreme with the Supreme in Krishna Consciousness, can have neither transcendental intelligence that, nor a steady mind, without which there's no possibility of peace, and how there can be any happiness without peace. So there's no way you can become happy without Krishna. That's a myth. Yes? Yes, true. It won't work, you know. Mm, but if you get connected to Krishna through the Guru, and as well as here, you want to read? Sure, bro. Oh, learned Uddhava, those who fix their consciousness on me, giving up all material desires, share with me a happiness that cannot possibly be experienced by those engaged in sense gratification. 
After that, once you are engaged in Krishna service, and there is no comparison, uncomparable, mm. you know, happiness. One who does not desire anything within this world, who has achieved peace by controlling his senses, whose consciousness is equal in all conditions, and whose mind is completely satisfied in me, finds only happiness wherever he goes. Wow. Yes. Yes, Prabhupada. Yeah. That's why Krishna says, Surrender to me. Sarva Dharma Parityaja. I'm sure you know this verse, right? Yes, sir. Yes? Yes, sir. For those who don't know, we'll show you. Gosh, is a, you know, happiness in Krishna consciousness. This happiness cannot be obtained by any means except by taking up the process of devotional service. Sarva dharma parityaja maam ekam sharanam vrija aham tuam sarva pavibhyo mukshi asyami maa Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reaction. Do not fear. Yes? Mm -hmm. Only Krishna, you know, can help in this. Mm -hmm. There's no other way to this, you know. If you try to avoid Krishna, then you cannot, uh, you know, as Krishna says here, you know, he says, if you don't listen to me, Arjuna, if you, are, if you become conscious of me, you will pass over all these obstacles of conditioned life by my grace. If ever you do not work in such consciousness, but act through false ego, not hearing me, you will be lost. So the choice is us. We have given this free will, mm -hmm. whether to surrender or not to surrender. You That's want so happiness? Or you don't want happiness? Your choice. Mm -hmm. yes. Only a fool, you know, will work against this. Yes? Yes, sure. And it's not just that you'll be lost, you know. Krishna will ruin you, you know. Krishna is not just sort a of fool that you let you do whatever you like, you know, under the sun. You know. Yes? Yes, sure. It's God, you know. You can't go and take things from another person and enjoy it. Can you do that? No. No one is no dear one. to the Supreme Person. Oh, you please read. You want to read? Yeah. No one is dear to the Supreme Person if God had, nor is anyone his enemy or friend. But he gives inspiration to those who have not forgotten him and destroy those who have. Those who have. Forgotten. You have forgotten him. Oh, I have forgotten. Okay. It's not wow. some light word, you know. Hmm? They say our classes are all very heavy, but the verses are even more heavier. Hmm? <laughs> you have any choice here? Tell me in this material world. Tell you? Huh? No choice, bro. No choice, you know. You must be a fool if you don't want to take up this process. And you can see how miserable it is. Yes? Yes, bro. Uh, it's explained here also by Uddhava. Uh, mm -hmm. Uddhava is saying like this. Problem is people don't realize you have to again take birth millions of uh, lives and species to again come back to human form. Oh yeah, if you like to change some dress every life, it would be nice. Hmm? Yes? My... Sometimes become a frog, not bad, right? Yeah. 
Prabhu, there are a few questions in the chat. Once we finish, we will come. Oh, can you read this? Yeah, sure. My dear Lord, for one who is being cruelly burned in the blazing fire of material miseries, having fallen into the network of material existence, I do not see any possible shelter besides your, your two lotus feet, which are a shower of nectar extinguishing the fire of suffering. Very mm. well. Material existence is like an ocean that is extremely difficult to cross. The conditioned souls have fallen into this ocean, which is not cool, but rather burns them with the fire of misery. For one who has fallen into the sea and desires to get out, there is no rescue boat except the constant relishing within oneself of the pastimes narrations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh -oh. Yes. Yes, bro. Only when you come in contact with Krishna, this whole business of suffering is finished. That's why you have to seriously take up this process. Yes. Yes, bro. Unless you like to, you know, suffer a bit. And then, not a bit. Suffer. <laughs> yes. You say there are some questions, huh? What are the questions? So the Guru is Prabhupada. Guru is Prabhupada, that's it. Hmm? Right? Why Lord always took birth in male form? Because the Lord is male, Purusha. We all are Prakriti. You understand? But when you try to become Purusha, that's where the problem all starts. You, know? you understand? That's why we say Govindam Adi Purusham. Why we sing like that? Because the Lord is the original male. Yes, the original enjoyer. Correct? Yes, sir. So this is why Guru Brahma is using the word uh, Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. Yes? Yes, sir. Prakriti is a material energy, his material energy. The Lord has got three energies. One is him himself, is called superior energy. Then you have the material energy, the external energy, inferior energy, and he has got in between the spirit souls, they are in the marginal energy. Yes? Yes, Prabhupada. So this, this question about how we can summarize the ten avatar, this is a Maya interpretation we don't accept. Huh? You ask this question, correct? About this 10 avatars. Hello, you're there? Yes, bro. She is there. Yeah, this Mataji. is Mataji. this we, we don't accept this this philosophy. This is, hmm? this is not correct. Yes, originally we come from the fish and we go slowly to the tree. Then we become, you know, but the avatar doesn't denote this. This is not our way of explaining. This is coming from the impersonal school. They explain like that. But when the Lord took with as a fish, the perfect human being already. But the human life starts off from the fish anyway. It says here there are nine eight eight point four million species. So the lowest is the fish, nine hundred thousand. Then they move on to the trees and trees to insects and reptiles and then they go to birds. Uh, quadrupeds and finally, human species. 
Yes. Mm. About this four lakh human species. Mm. Like, uh, I mean, it's like a different species in human, or is it like is it on yeah, this planet or yeah, other planets? Yeah, yeah. In America, there's a, a cosmopolitan of many people. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And all have got different qualities. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes or not? Yes, please. Prabhu, all this 8.4 million is there on one universe or spread no, across? No, Prab is scattered in the universe. Within one? One universe. Oh, okay. One Brahmanda. Yeah. Okay. Some of the some of the species are in the heavenly planet, you know. I'll give you the breakdown you can reach. Heavenly demigods also come into four lakh species, Prabhu. Human species. Demigods, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I show you here. This verse will give you more clarity on that. You want to read? Sure, Prabhu. Of the two energies manifest spirit and the dull matter, beings possessing living force, vegetables, grass, trees, and plants, are superior to dull matter, stone, earth. Superior to non-moving plants and vegetables are worms and snakes, which can move. Superior to worms and snakes are animals that have developed intelligence. Superior to animals are human beings, and superior to human beings are ghosts because they have no material bodies. Superior to ghosts are the Gandharvas and superior to them are the Siddhas. Superior to Siddhas are Kinaras and superior to them are the Asuras. Superior to the Asuras are the demigods and of the demigods, Indra, the king of heaven is supreme. Superior to Indra are the direct sons of Lord Brahma, son like King Daksha and supreme among Brahm Brahma's son is Lord Shiva. Since Lord Shiva is the son of Lord Brahma, Brahma is considered superior. But Brahma is also subordinate to me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Because I am inclined to the Brahmanas, the Brahmanas are best of all. So it's clear? Hmm? Yes, Prabhu, it's very clear. Everything is there in the Bhagavatam. Only thing is that we have to read it. Yes? Yes, Prabhu. So therefore, you see how important it is to be a devotee. Hmm? Correct? Yes, Prabhu. So please, chant Hare Krishna. Make your life successful. Yes? Mm -hmm. Any further questions? Hmm. Anybody else has any questions? Pal Mataji or Kinchal Mataji, you have any questions? So, no yes, you okay. have a question? No, no property. How you like the session today? Yes, yes. Yes. Did you learn something? Yes, Prabhupada. What? Yes, Where are you from? Prabhupada. Where are you from? Payal Saluja. Huh? Prabhupada, I'm here in New Jersey. Oh, you're from New Jersey. Oh, one of uh, Baladev's uh, contact, huh? Yes, yes Prabhu, I just wanted to introduce them. These two oh. Matajis, Pal oh. Mataji and Kinjal Mataji. Both of them are in New Jersey. Oh. And uh, they're very eagerly waiting for, you know, for some some uh, senior disciple to guide them. Uh -huh. So how they like the session? Yes, Prabhu, the Nupan, Jashla Prabhupada. Yes, Prabhuji, it's very enlightening. Like you have answer of like uh, with Shirimad Bhagavatam reference in just like everything on your uh, like in 
on your tips that like you are doing giving answer like that by the reference only and with the purport of shila prabhu pada i like it prabhu ji thank you thank you for the class hari krishna dhanvat pranam jai shila prabhu pada what about miss kinjal yes prabhu ji same i like it i am impressed that how you are um just by the searching and you have all the answers from shrimad bhagavatam thank you prabhu ji yeah i don't give stories like you know a muslim man <laughs> went to the shop and he saw krishna without shoes and you know and this muslim man buy a shoe for krishna and come on this kind of stories i don't know what kind of class is that you know yes <laughs> Nonsense. Yes, this is pure nonsense. You understand? Me? You know how much it is there on these books, correct? Yes, Prabhuji. Hmm. We just today we just talk about happiness, correct? Yes. Hmm. So yes, with so many subject matters, I think you can see so many classes I've done. You can hear them. So many, you know, realization you can get from this. and probably that is one thing you know from day and night he translated this books yes 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 prabhu ji there is like fortunately we are not reading them you know correct yes so i probably yes, said if you don't read this book you will fall down you know huh you know the words right mm-hmm. yes huh Yes, Prabhu Ji. Yes. You know where is it, Prabhu Ji? If you don't read my books, you will fall down. Yes. Where? Mm-hmm. I show you one verse again before I close. Huh? uh prabhu like i mean while you search like these two devotees also wanted to have a, a session with you prabhu uh, whenever mm-hmm. you are free oh next, yeah but now it's very late for you right it's going late right isn't it yeah yes prabhu what time is it there now 11 o'clock 11 yeah mine is 11 o'clock here Okay. I, plenty, I have got plenty of time. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> yes. Huh? Any other time, bro? When you when you have some time, I heard from Subhadra Mataji that you're traveling. No, no, I don't travel. I stay here in I Singapore, you know, because I'm already. I don't have the passport. He's virtually, virtually traveling. Oh, virtual travel. Okay. Yeah, I've got back-to-back classes, you know, from all these countries. Today, tonight will be China. Okay. Yesterday was Australia and uh, Bangla, you know, India ba- in Bangla language. Bengal. And then uh, day before was Canada, and then the China today. Tomorrow I'm a little free because we moved the class to uh, Saturday. Friday, okay. I'm local, all English, you know. Friday, and then on uh, Saturday, I have Bhagavatam in the morning. Then I have got uh, uh, four o'clock is Hindi, and then in the evening I have uh, the English. Sorry, Friday I am with Philippines. Okay. And then so- Sunday I am with ba- Russia and with Bulgaria. Wow. So I have uh, myself, you know. So uh, tomorrow, uh, around this time, like before this time, is it okay, Prabhu? Yeah, yeah, I can do tomorrow then. Hmm? Okay, yes, sure. Yes, Prabhu ji, with folded hands, we request you please uh, give us association. Uh, we have few. I am very ready to give my small little association if it is appreciated. <laughs> Thank you so much, Prabhu ji. I'm not a very big man. I'm very small in many ways. Whenever, whenever I see Prabhu Pada disciple, I feel so much enlightened. Even by seeing them, I won't like when Prabhu Ji told about you. So I'm feeling very happy to see you on video. Even 
Uh, Why you don't put on your video that I can see you? You are all hidden. Why? What's the problem? You hide yourself. Hmm? This is impersonal. No, but, but, this is impersonal <laughs> philosophy. Yeah? Nobody like to show themselves. Come on. No, but okay, actually, before that, you please, please read this. Yeah, put on your video. We can see you. No, come on. What is this? Actually, America. actually, actually, Prabhuji, it's night and kids are sleeping, so I'm in the dark. That's why I didn't turn on my video. Oh, you are in a sleeping yeah. gear, huh? Yeah. All right. Yeah, actually, mm. normally the Kinjal Mataji and Pal Mataji they have the sadhana sheet for last three years, Prabhu. Mm. They wake up early every day morning at five, okay. so they at go five, to sleep huh? early. Yeah. Very good. I I wake okay. up at two thirty in the morning. Wow! Okay. Every day, every day for many many years. I eat only once a day. <laughs> in the evening at six thirty, I have my meal. I don't take grains. I take grains, yeah, but no rice, no, you know. Uh, that's all I eat. Wow. Yeah, actually, for your class, they had a, no, they they are awake. They wanted yeah. to. They're very eager to meet you. <laughs> sure, Prabhu, I'll read this. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, becomes, yeah. Nice. I mean, becomes, I we appreciate that you have joined this class and you got some, you know, inspiration, encouragement. Hmm? So I'm I'm requesting. Yes, we want to definitely unite and help many other people. You know, who are misguided. And if you all can help us serve Prabhupada in this way, I'm most happy, you know. Yes, Prabhu. Hmm? Yes, Baladev, Prabhu. Sure, Prabhu. I'll read it. Uh, yes. Men becomes... Hmm? Sorry, Prabhu, you're saying something. Um, Sorry. No, no, carry on. Say. Yeah. Men become strong and stout by eating sufficient grains, but the devotee who simply eats ordinary grains but does not taste the transcendental pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Krishna gradually becomes weak and falls down from the transcendental position. However, if one drinks but a drop of nectar of Krishna's pastime, his body and mind begin to bloom and he begins to laugh, sing and dance. Oh, all the devotees connected with Krishna conscious movement must read all the books that have been translated, the Chaitanya Chiritamrita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and others. Otherwise, after some time, they will simply eat, sleep, and fall down from their position. Thus, they will miss the opportunity to attain an eternal blissful life of transcendental pleasure. Yes. Yes. Yes, I want to show you one more verse before I wrap up. Huh? Since they are so eager in initiation, eh? Yeah, they are very much eager, Prabhu. Can you read this verse? Yes. Unless one is initiated by a bona fide spiritual master, all his devotional activities are useless. A person who is not properly initiated can descend again into animal species. Yes. It is the duty of no, every okay. human being. It, it, it's yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So you see how important it is. Hmm? Yes, bro. Connection to Prabhupada is a lifetime, you know. You know, see, I never end, you know. So many verses are coming into my mind. I'm going to bore, <laughs> bore you with my. <laughs> yes. I just have one last question, Prabhu. How how to come to this point where to, you know where we could also point out to these verses just like this? I guess you have to take a, you know, association of Prabhupada and Krishna. Yes, Devi Para Bhakti Yata Devi Tata Guru. Right? When you have mm -hmm. implicit faith in Guru and Krishna, then automatically all the Vedas are revealed to you, you know? Right. Yes. Yes, Prabhu. Can you read this? Yes. For the conditioned souls, the human body is most difficult to achieve and it can be lost at any moment. 
but I think that even those who have achieved human life rarely gain the association of pure devotees who are dear to the Lord of Vaikuntha. And you got that with Prabhupada, yes? Yes, Prabhu. Hmm. And some crazy guys are leaving and going back to this crazy guru. Eh? Can you imagine their position? <laughs> <laughs> it must be worse yes, than a bro. dog, you know? Yeah? Yeah. You follow? Yes. Yes, bro. Mm. So please try to take advantage immediately, you know? There's another verse here. Initiation must be done immediately, you know? It says here in this verse, So you see, uh, as far as time of Diksha initiation is concerned, everything depends on the position of the Guru. As soon as a bona fide Guru is received by chance or by program, one should immediately take the opportunity to receive initiation. Is this point? Yes, Prabhu. Uh, I think we need to talk. So we have got Prabhupada. So if we are not going to take the advantage, then it's mm. going to be. If by chance one gets a Sadguru, it doesn't matter whether one is in the temple or forest. If the Sadguru is a bona fide spiritual master agrees, one can be initiated immediately without waiting for suitable time or place. Hari Bol. Yes. Okay. Everything is there in Prabhupada books, you know. So what do you do? I mean, I'm giving these classes. You can always view them again and take notes, you know. Yes, Prabhu. That way you also will learn, correct? For you to read the, all the books, I don't know, you're going to take some time, no? Yeah? Yes, Prabhu. So, at, at the most, we are able to spend one, two hours only just for reading a day. Yes. But I feel it is not sufficient at all. I don't think you can finish everything. Yeah. I have read the Bhagavad Gita more than 50 times. I've read the Bhagavatam also more than 50 times, the CC also more than 50 times. Hari I have finished Prabhupada's letters, correspondence, his, uh, his uh, what, uh, talking? Conversations. Conversations. At two times I did that. Practically, I have covered uh, everything of Prabhupada. By I think the mercy of all you Vaishnavas, I managed to have this facility in my 46 years of you know, being a devotee. And by the mercy of Prabhupada and Krishna, you asked me some things, I be able to show you where and how, you know, or explain to you how everything links up, you know, mm -hmm. without going anywhere outside Prabhupada books. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. I think uh, this is something I can offer, you know, some service to all of you. So if you take notes, then you are also getting this knowledge it's already, you know, for you, you know, to refer and also quote, you know. Yes? Yes, Prabhupada. And you are also studying everything because I'm taking everything that for you, no? Mm -hmm. Right, yes, bro. So this is how Prabhupada wanted done because our devotees, if they all are expert in preaching, then our, we can take over the world. Nobody can come near us, you know? This mm -hmm. stupid, stupid sad guru or whatever, you know, all nonsense, you know? Okay. <laughs> yes? Yes, bro. I don't think he can have, he, this guy has no knowledge, you know, what knowledge? This Sadguru guys and Gopal, what Jai, what's the guy name? Go, Gopal, Gopal. Oh, crazy, Gopal. Crazy, Gopal. crazy, crazy, oh, crazy guys, no, no, all speculations, you know? 
and some guys started some what business yoga huh correct all is gone is falling for that no yes or no mm -hmm. correct hmm yeah yes prabhu business yoga prabhu yeah the guy is conducting business yoga in iskon oh first time i'm hearing okay yeah the guy in iskon is project is progressing to so many things yeah prabhu uh, very unfortunately in, uh, in new york as well uh, there is a group uh, i was studying in new york university so right next to my university was this uh, brooklyn temple so they have this group where they'll give initiations and everything uh, and you only need to follow three regulatory principles the fourth regulatory principles is uh, relaxed that is illicit relationship is relaxed i was really shocked mm. now you see that the materialistic so called guru instruct his materialistic disciple about economic development and self gratification this is Are called it, business yeah. yoga prabhu mm -hmm. and because of such instruction the foolish disciple continue in the materialistic existence of ignorance hmm? but your lordship gives knowledge that is eternal and the intelligent person receiving such knowledge is quickly situated in original constitutional position i showed you this now correct so many verses from the guru correct yes prabhu so they are Material teaching this in iskon this uh, this guy i don't know what is his name but the guy is but many followers mm -hmm. uh, is taking verses from the gita to show that oh business yoga you know oh oh so you see how people are be fooled you know this is from the bhagavatam you understand mm -hmm. so our duty is to enlighten people properly you know based on sadhu shastra guru so kindly you know please help us we are very much be indebted to you if you can help all of us it's like here subhadra and sham are there in america they are trying very hard to move our eyes scam when if you also can be part of it i think we can help many souls you know <laughs> i think many i practically all i see 99% are misguided yes yes from yeah uh, because the knowledge you see i just to show you another verse before i wrap up i'm sorry i am always my mind is going <laughs> it's very yeah. nice bro it's very nice to see this actually uh, and this verse hmm see a sincere person is able to see krishna through the transparent via medium of sri guru dev the spiritual master unless one is enlightened by knowledge given by the spiritual master he cannot see things as they are even though he remains constantly with the spiritual master I have so many of my god brothers oh there is close association with prabhupad correct Hmm. But what they have learned? Okay. Nothing. Unless one is enlightened by the knowledge given by the spiritual master, he cannot see things as they are. Right. So knowledge is <laughs> very important. <laughs> I can give another class on this knowledge alone. You know. Anyway, there's so much time. Yeah. It's already twelve midnight. I think I'm sorry. You're going to go be late tomorrow for your work or whatever. Hmm? <laughs> I'm already taken leave, Prabhu. I'm I'm actually bedridden since yesterday. Oh, you're bedridden, actually. Huh? Yeah, so I've got sciatica. The sciatic um, nerve has pinched. Oh, really? So, yeah. With even talking to you yesterday, I was I was sitting with great pain. You I should really go. I don't know. You should go to the Chinese guys. You know. Uh huh. They will do fix it. your back for you. Oh, Aero okay. practice okay. are the worst. I mean, the better than the Chinese guys are these Ayurvedic guys. You know, they do massage, huh? and you uh -huh. this problem will go away from you. Okay, 
Okay, especially bro. that there's a this I can give you the name you want, you know, this uh, in Kerala somewhere, you know. Okay. Day, 12 days or 14 days, you know, they massage you with oil and this back okay. problem will be finished. Worst people uh, to go to is the Cairo practitioners. Okay. They'll mess you up. They may theoretically say we have to pull the bone and this and that. That's not the way, boy. <laughs> you understand? Yes, yes, bro. So I've got people you know, testifying when they went to this place and they all get. Yeah, the Kerala no place pain. is very, very famous, bro. Yes, you go there. You know, I think your bone, your back is kind of a, quite severe if you're lying down like that. Hmm? Yes, bro. It's for like three days I'm lying down like that. Mm, I think you better go. No? You can go now to India, right? No, Prabhu. <laughs> My H1 okay. is on renewal, so I cannot exit the country until I receive. Uh... Oh, is there any of this kind of a yoga thing and I mean the Ayurvedic thing in America? There should be. I will check it. I know there is a Chinese thing here. I'll a check Chinese guy also will help relieve your thing, you know. Okay. They're quite good also with the back, you know. Mm -hmm. right, go and see them, huh? Yeah, Get sure. Bro, we'll see them. Okay, sure, I've bro. taken too much time from all of you. I'm sorry. Huh? We are sorry, Prabhu, to take your time, actually. So long it has been. <laughs> we are sorry. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Huh? Thank you again. Huh? All, all Krishna, bro, Prabhu, bro. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. Prabhu tomorrow, okay. what time do you think? Can make it, Prabhu? Tomorrow, I'm. Uh, you can ask them what time they are going to be on. Okay. I'm in the morning. You have to. I have to um, come in in the morning. What time you are? You you are about the same time except twelve hours different, no? Yeah, twelve hours different. So after uh, nine thirty, that'll be nice. Hmm? Nine thirty, Prabhu. Singapore, yeah. But that means it's nine thirty evening your time, no? Okay. Uh, uh, Pile Mataji. Oh, Mataji. Otherwise, you want to do? Oh, I won't be free in the evenings because I always have a class. Now tomorrow, I'm uh, tomorrow. Yeah, I don't have a class in the evening. So in the morning, but you go to work, no? Yes. Yeah. So better do tomorrow morning. Huh? I mean, morning, for you, tomorrow for you, uh, okay. for me is morning and night for you here. All right. Uh, Pile Mataji, Kichal Mataji is nine thirty. That means uh, that means. Eastern, uh, same time as today, Prabhu. 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. Same yeah. as today. Sure. I'll be on, huh? Yeah, sure, Prabhu. It'd be nice sure. if we can talk. Thank yeah, you again. Sure, Prabhu, definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Prabhu. All glory to Prabhu, huh? All glory to Prabhu, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu.